Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the fundamentals of control systems. In today's video, we're talking about the Laplace transform. I'm Gus, and this is Endless Engineering, so let's dive right in. Before we talk about the Laplace transform in specific, let me start out by talking about functions. So when we say we have a function, say y is some function f of t, right? What does that mean? That typically means that f is some mapping, right, that takes the space or takes samples in a set t and then transforms them to samples in the set y, where we know that t belongs to this capital T set and y belongs to this capital Y set, right? So now this function takes a variable t. And let's say that this variable t, instead of just generally saying capital T, let's say it's in the positive real numbers, right? And it generates a y in the real numbers set, right? So that, that kind of tells you that we have some function that takes in a variable in a positive real numbers and generates an output in real values. So it's a real valued function. Great. Now, an example of this function could be, um, you know, x squared, or, uh, well, in this case, t squared, right? Not x squared, t squared, or the sine of t, right? Or any other function you can think of. And these are functions that we can deal with. They're nice, and we can work with them. But sometimes, especially when you deal with linear systems, and you want to design a controller or something like that, it's hard to find this, this mapping or this function. Take, say, for example, um, the equation for a spring mass damper system, right? You have mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f, the external force, right? You go back and watch the video where we talked about deriving the dynamics for a, a suspension system using the spring mass damper model. So if I want to get the mapping between that takes in an f input Right, let's say f, f is in the real domain, right, because the force that acts on the system is, is a real number. And I want to map that to um, x itself, right, which is in the real domain, right? So I need a function, let's call this function f, that takes in the force f and gives you x, right? So I could go and... Uh, I could map the, I could, I could solve this differential equation and find this map, right? But there's an easier way, right? And this easier way is typically done through the Laplace transform. So let's move on from this and kind of formalize what that means. So given my, given my function here, right, with all these definitions, to say t is in r plus, which is the positive real numbers, and y is r, right? Suppose that I tell you I have an operator with this script um, L that operates on this function, on f of t, right? And it gives you a f of s, okay? Where s is equal to uh, sigma plus omega j, right? And this belongs to the complex numbers where this complex number set can be defined as uh, sigma plus omega j, where uh, sigma and omega are real numbers, and uh, j is the square root of negative 1, right? That's this set. So this is the complex number set, and I'm basically s is a complex variable, and also f of s is a mapping from complex to complex domain, right? So f is also a complex uh, value, complex value function, right? In this case, uh, you can see that y is a real valued function and t is in uh, positive real numbers. And then if I apply this operator, script L, on this f of t, I get f of s, which is a function of a complex variable uh, and has complex value, right? And why would I do that? The reason being is if I had a function in, in t in the r plus domain that is 
hard to deal with or hard to solve or hard to work with, uh, most notably for, for control systems applications, is differential equations. If you have a differential equation in time, sometimes it's hard to deal with those or solve them or even design controllers using them. So you can apply a transformation and shift them into the S domain, which is a complex domain, and then they become algebraic and they're easy to deal with. And this L, given all these definitions, is actually the Laplace transform. And it can be defined as follows. It is the integral from 0 to infinity of the function f of t in the t domain, which is the r plus um, uh, positive real numbers, times e to the minus st dt. Right? So this is the Laplace transform. And it is basically an operator that acts on a real valued function that uses real uh, positive real value variables and it generates a complex value function that has complex variables. That's basically it. And the reason why you would do this is that you would move again your function into this domain, into this complex domain, it becomes easier to deal with. Typically, it again for control systems, it's you take a differential equation, you apply the Laplace operator to it, and you get an algebraic equation, and it becomes easier to deal with. Uh, there's also a definition for the inverse Laplace transform, because when you want to uh, come back from the complex domain, uh, and you want to show your solution in the time domain, t, t here is the time, right? That's why I said uh, t is always positive uh, real numbers, that's the time domain. Uh, again, this is in the context of control systems. Uh, so the inverse Laplace transform is defined as 1 over 2 pi j uh, times the integral from uh, sigma minus j infinity to sigma plus j infinity. Um, e to the st times uh, f of s ds. So there you have it. That's the idea of the Laplace transform. If you had a um, real valued function with positive real variables and you it was hard to deal with that function or it was complicated in the time domain or in that positive real number domain, then you apply the Laplace uh, transform, which is an operator that shifts it into the complex domain, and that way it becomes easier to deal with. Okay, so now that we have defined the Laplace transform operator, let's take a look at this integral a little more closely, right? So I have this function over here, and I have a function over here. Can I solve this integral? The question is yes, I can use integration by parts to solve this. Now, with integration by parts, if you have the integral from a to b of u of t times v prime of t um, dt, you can solve that by doing u of t times v of t from a to b plus the integral, oh, minus, sorry, minus the integral from a to b u prime of t v of t dt, right? So let's apply the uh, integration by parts to the Laplace transform. What do we get? This is our first function, so f of t, that's our u here, and this is the derivative of v, so if I integrate that, uh, the integral of the um, function e is this, right? And then I do minus the integral from 0 to infinity, uh, u prime, which is f prime of t, times v, again, is e to the minus st divided by minus s dt. Right? And this, I need to substitute here 0 to infinity, which are the bounds. So let's do that. If I substitute 0, what do I get? I get f of 0 times e to the minus s times t, which t is 0, that's 0, divided by minus s, and then I subtract from this, um, oh, sorry, this is uh, e to the minus negative infinity, right? I'm substituting infinity, this, this is not, yeah, I'm substituting infinity, so e to the minus um, infinity minus, now I substitute the the 0, this is f at infinity, um, f at 0, 
times e to the 0 over minus s. Um, and I have here minus the integral from 0 to infinity, f prime of t, e to the minus st divided by minus s dt. Uh, now this term e to the minus infinity is 1 over e to the infinity, which is 1 over infinity, which is actually 0, goes away. I'm left with these two terms. Now in this term, this value here is 1, right? And this negative goes with this negative. So I get f of 0 divided by s minus the integral from 0 to infinity. And I have a 1 over s here, and I'm integrating with respect to t, so I can assume that this is constant. I can take it out here, 1 over minus s, f prime of t, e minus st, dt, right? And so this negative sign and this negative sign, they become positive together. And if you look at this integral and compare it to the definition of the Laplace transform, this is nothing but the, inner, the Laplace transform of f prime. Because here, if I, uh, if I put the Laplace transform on a function f, I get f times e st. If that f was f prime itself, then this would become the Laplace transform of f prime. So we get f of s, uh, uh, f of 0 over s plus 1 over s, um, the Laplace transform of f, sorry, f prime of t, right? This is what? This is equal to the Laplace transform of f of t, right? So in this case, I can write the Laplace transform of um, f prime of t as what? If I multiply everything by s here, uh, this s goes away, this s goes away, I get an s here, and I take this f0 to the other side, this is equal to the Laplace transform of f of t times s minus f of 0. And this is a very important result when it comes to dealing with dynamical systems and when it comes to uh, designing controllers for them. Because this effectively tells us that if I apply the Laplace transform to a derivative of a function, I can get an algebraic equation from that derivative that is the Laplace transform of this uh, function itself times s minus f0. But what about when I have multiple derivatives, right? So say I had uh, a second derivative. So what is the Laplace uh, transform of uh, f double prime uh, of t, right? Or in that case, what's the Laplace transform of f to the nth derivative uh, of t? So I challenge you to do this as homework, uh, use these definitions for the Laplace transform and try to integrate and try to get the Laplace transform for the first, second, and third, and nth derivative. Uh, because in the future, we're going to be using those and applying them to ordinary differential equations, first order, second order differential equations, so we can get a mapping that's in the S domain. And we're going to see that it becomes an algebraic equation, like we've shown here for the first derivative, and it becomes easier to deal with. And we can manipulate it, we can design controllers, uh, we can glean some insight on, on how the system operates when we look at it in the S domain, as opposed to looking at it in the time domain. I hope you liked this video on the Laplace transform. If you did, hit that thumbs up button to show your support. And while you're there, think about subscribing to Endless Engineering, and maybe hitting that notification bell. That way, every time we roll out a new video, YouTube sends you a notification so you can stay up to date. Thanks for watching.